Hello, everyone. I am back for the second time. Uh, if you caught my last live video, um, then uh, you know the sound has just started, so I'm back. Um, hopefully, this is better. I am so excited because this wine crushed the last time I brought it live for you guys, and I'm so excited to have it back again. This is the 2018 Radio Silence, so the 17 was the wine that I featured before. These are super cool NDA wines from Wine Access that uh, deliver a ton of value for the price. I'm just making sure my sound is okay. Give me one second. Um, oh, maybe that wasn't okay. Anyway, um, hopefully, is the, if the sound is okay, can somebody just give me a thumbs up? Because I, uh, I had a sound issue in the last video that I just tried to do. Um, sorry, back to the point. 2018 Radio Silence. This is an NDA wine from Wine Access. And what is very cool about this wine is that while they can't reveal the actual fruit source for the wine, they can say, um, oh, good. The sound is good now. Thank you very much. Um, that is so funny. I thought that you were my brother-in-law, but you are not the same person, uh, Bray Rodriguez. I thought that was you. Um, anyway, <laughs> this is a, this is an undisclosed fruit source from Oakville, from the hillsides of Oakville. And this is a wine, while they cannot disclose exactly where it came from, what they can tell you is the following. This hillside Oakville vineyard has garnered several hundred point scores. It is the envy of all wine collectors. Um, it has been on some of the best wine lists in the world. And, uh, you know, I think the list goes on and on, but really the wine speaks for itself. So you can do all the Googling you want, but what is very, very cool, um, and hello, Diego from Argentina. What is very cool about this wine is that these are wines that should cost between $500 and $1,500 a bottle that are coming in at $45 a bottle. And basically, you know, the, the short version of what is going on here is um, you have certain situations, i.e., you know, really, really huge crop loads and vintages, uh, situations where wineries need cash flow, you know, just, you know, so many different things that can happen uh, throughout the course of a winery's life that result in them needing to offload a certain amount of grapes or a certain amount of juice. And so situations like radio silence arise. And in 2000, the 2017 was a perfect example of that. Um, and, and premium, premium fruit that became available that wine access, or I said, should say juice. Um, I'm not actually not sure if it was juice or grapes, um, but basically wine access could come in and swoop up that fruit slash juice and uh, put their label on it and um, give it to us for a fraction of the price, which is very, very cool. Um, this particular wine is a different vineyard source than the 2017. So if you were lucky enough to snag some of those 2017s, um, this is a different one. If you weren't so lucky and you didn't grab any, or maybe you didn't grab enough, this is another opportunity to steal uh, this wine, which Again, different finger source, but still ultra, ultra, ultra premium. Um, I cannot say enough for how crazy this deal is. So I think we should talk about the wine a little bit because um, obviously, you know, we can talk about the price and uh, just how amazing this deal is. But if the juice does not speak for itself, well, then what does it really matter, right? So um, let's get into the wine, shall we? I did taste this not too long ago. It has not been decanted, but it has been open. And I will say off the bat, this is a 2018, is 2020 now, so it is quite, quite young. And this wine needs a little bit of air slash time. So if you order this wine and you get it in the next few days, do give yourself a little bit of time. Do not um, do not open it all immediately. Give yourself like two weeks because it will suffer from a little bit of bottle shock. And then do little, let it decant for about 30 minutes or so. Um, normally, I'm not a huge fan of decanting, but I think this one really benefits from air. It does start to like, you know, give us all the great textural things that we love. And aromatically, it's just a superior wine after about 30 minutes of being open. So with that in mind, let's get into this just like jumping out of the glass, so expressive, so big, lush, um, you know, like a mixed bag of berries. Um, so we talk about, you know, all different colors of fruits, everything from blue to red, purple to black. This is sort of all of them. Oakville, 
I would normally be in the red cam, depending on where it came from. Um, but this is actually, I think because it is hillside, hopefully you're getting a little bit of everything in there. There's also a ton of like savory stuff going on underneath. Um, a lot of sage, you know, a little bit of rosemary. And then there's also something just a little bit spicy about this that I really, really love um, that makes this wine just so, so expressive. So, you know, immediately off the bat, you know, if I were to blind taste this wine, I would say this is something that is definitely on the premium side of things. You know, we can't we can't tell everything about a wine by how it smells, but we can get a lot of things. Um, the other thing I want to mention, because some other uh, NDA wines that I've talked about before, specifically the yesterday wine had a significant amount of new French oak. It smelled very, very expensive. Um, this is not as opulent with the oak or at least not as obvious. So this is not a wine that is leading with oak. It's leading with fruit and it's really focused and it's really precise um, and it's really bouncy and very aromatic. So I love that about this wine. Uh, the oak feels a little bit more in integrated than the yesterday was um, and definitely not as dark as Radio Silence 1.0. Um, and I, I really like that because it just feels a little bit more um, indicative of the terroir and just you know feels more more like the fruit versus like the other like makeup things that can go around it. So. Mm. Again, air is doing so many great things for this wine. Initially when I tasted it and it was really sort of, um, it was crunchy. It was a little bit more, um, it was a little bit more bouncy. This is starting to flesh out a little bit and give you all that, that plushiness. It is velvety in a way that makes me think premium, premium Napa Cab. Um, and I, sh I don't know if I've mentioned that it is from Napa Valley Hex at Oakville, but this is Napa Cab. Um, they are calling this Cabernet Sauvignon, which means it's, it's at least 75% of that variety. Uh, could be 25% of other things, we're not sure what. Although I will tell you aromatically and on the palate, I am getting some other sort of varietal, um, varietal markers, i.e., you know, spiciness from Petit Verdot, a little bit of floralness from Cabernet Franc. Um, texturally, there could be a little bit of Merlot in here, who knows? Um, but I love the texture of this wine probably more than anything else. It's soft without being, without being too, um, too soft, you know, it's soft without being um, sort of mousy and, um, you know, just sort of too soft can sometimes be boring, right? Like we like to have a little bit of layer. And I love that this wine is really, really just sort of like soft on the top, but it's really got edges to stand up. I just had it with dinner uh, not too long ago. I had it with a steak, of course, and it was so, so delicious. It had perfect minerality and acidity to really cut through it very, very decadent uh, cut of meat and it, it cut right through it. It stood up to it. It had enough tannin, but the tannin is really, really integrated. It's really nice and soft right now, um, but it is definitely, definitely there. And this is the hallmark of, of a really well-made wine. Um, and then also just incredibly high quality fruit. Um, let's taste one more time and then we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on with this. Mm. It's these wines are just so crazy to me, you know, the way that they can be so opulent and so big, but also still so balanced. You know, it's, I, I've equated it to um, I talked about the Ponte Canet in that Bordeaux video, you know, sort of like a like an elephant on elephant on point shoes, you know, just like sort of big, but like manages to like just sort of take really dental, like very precise steps. And that's what this wine sort of feels like. Um, just going back to a little bit uh, about this wine and, and how these wines come to be, like I said, you know, many different situations that a winery could potentially be in that allow for these wines to happen. Um, and, and so what's interesting is that, you know, this wine is 2018. So a huge, huge crop load. So, you know, you're probably looking at a premium winery that had a lot of fruit in that vintage and not a lot of places to put it. Uh, and so wine access essentially swoops in there. What happens is when they buy that fruit or buy that juice, they are, you know, forced to sign an NDA. They cannot disclose who the vineyard source is, you know, what the winery was, who made it, really anything about that wine. So they can give you, you know, a few hints here and there um, when they're selling it. But other than that, you know, it remains to be a secret about, you know, who this who this wine is actually from. Um, this, uh, this particular wine, I'm really loving the spot that it's in. Um, and I think longevity wise, you know, versus the 1.0 of Radio Silence in 2017. This is a wine that maybe has a little bit more longevity than the 2017 was by way of acidity, minerality, and you know, really, really great tannic structure. 
Um, what else do I want to say? This is $45. Uh, it does go down to $38. These wines sell out. This is not hyperbolic. I promise you they sell out within 72 hours. Uh, if not sooner than that, this wine came out last night. Today is November 30th, 2020. Um, every time I put out these wines, I get messages from people who are like, shoot, I didn't buy the wine in time or shoot. I didn't buy enough of this wine. Um, Hey, when's this wine coming back? And I get, you know, so many sad messages and I don't like getting sad messages, which is why I'm here today letting you know that it is up for grabs. Uh, so it just went out last night. It will sell out. Um, it is, like I said, 45 bucks going down to 38 on a case below. There is a $50 off. Um, if you've never purchased from my access before it's 50 off 150. So, uh, and you get free shipping at the uh, $120, $120 slash six bottle mark. So that kind of works out. I mean, if you use that $50 code, um, you can get a few bottles of wine, get free shipping, and it's, you know, it's 100 bucks basically. So well worth doing. Um, and this wine does not return. I mean, these are the kinds of things that like once they happen and they're gone, they're gone for forever. Uh, and it makes me very sad that, you know, there's not much more, but um, that is the case. Um, let's taste this wine one more time, see where it's at. Yeah, I mean, if I were serving this wine at press, definitely, you know, if I blinded it, I didn't know what it was, I'd definitely be in that at least 225 camp, at least, um, you know, over that mark, it's like, can sometimes be a little bit difficult to tell, but like, and this is also very, very young, but I think this, you know, this is definitely a wine that is coming from super premium, high quality vineyard source, high touch place. Um, and it's just, it's jumping out of the glass, but it's also like really kind of serious natured. Like I said, from Oakville, which to me, I mentioned Ponte Canet before, you know, Ponte Canet, sorry, Ponte Canet is from Poyac. And to me, the symbiotic relationship between Ponte Canet Ooh, hello, too much wine. Uh, this, the relationship between Poyac and Oakville is definitely there. I always find, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of parallels there in the way that I've talked about St. Helena and, and Margot and Bordeaux. Um, similar, you know, generally speaking, Oakville can be very intense, very muscular, very, um, very overt in some ways, depending on where you're getting it from. This wine, I think because it is a little bit more on the hillside, I think you're not getting, you know, quite that like valley floor opulence that you get from Oakville, which I like. I mean, we think about, um, you know, very famous vineyards like Beckstaff or Tokelon, right? You know, sitting right in the heart of Oakville, you know, you've driven by it if you've been in, in Napa Valley before, it's on the left-hand side as you're driving north on Highway 29. And those wines are super flashy, very red fruited, um, you know, similar in the sense that they're intense and they're, they're, they're brooding. Um, but then when you start like sort of cresting up into the hillsides, both on the east and the west side, the wines start developing a sort of like uh, sort of nuance and a character underneath. And that's what I love about this wine is that as, as flashing as intense as this wine is, there is character and there's nuance and there's a lot of like really, really great savory things. So I am going to leave you with that. The wine is available for now. Um, I suspect that it will be gone by um, at least definitely by the end of the week, if not sooner. So uh, do yourself a favor, grab some wine, and uh, I hope you enjoyed your holiday. I will be back tomorrow for a live video with, um, with well, featuring Delilah Barnett Sparkling from Oregon, which I'm very excited about. That will be happening um, not too uh, not too far from now. So I'm going to go get some sleep. Um, Oh, good, James. I'm glad that you love these limited release wines. Yeah, they're super fun. Um, you know, you can't get them anywhere else. And uh, honestly, you know, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't endorse them if they weren't great. These are really, truly super steals. Um, and, you know, the juice speaks for itself. The messages have confirmed all of my beliefs. I've loved hearing from all of you guys about how excited you've been about these wines. Um, and what a great way to get through the 2020 year. So anyway, I'll leave you with that and I'll see y'all soon. Bye.